Well, hello, y'all, and welcome back to my kitchen and to Apron Strings. I am in the spirit of fall today. It's kind of, well, we finally got some rain, so it's been a little cloudy and overcast, and it looks like it ought to be kind of chilly outside. Well, it's not. It's hot and humid, but it kind of makes you feel like fall. So, I am going to try to start making a few recipes that I basically make in the fall. They just taste better then because they got those spices that tell us it's fall, like pumpkin. So, today I'm going to make a pumpkin crunch cake. Now, the history of this cake is, there's a little town not too far from me called Old Town Spring, and it has just a huge amount of little shops that you can just go from one to the other. And they had some tea rooms there. And one year, back in 1997, one of the tea rooms was serving this cake and they could not keep up with the demand. So they started selling the recipe for $2 a piece. And my friend, Judy, bought the recipe and she shared it with me. It's rich, it's easy, and I've been making it ever since. So I'll take y'all a picture of the card at some point and put it in. But before I get started, I want to tell you that it calls for pumpkin pie spice. And when I was getting all my ingredients out, I didn't have any pumpkin pie spice. So I hopped online and I researched several recipes and they all gave the same measurements. So I've created my own little container of my pumpkin pie spice. Now something interesting that I read about the nutmeg, it's the only berry or little nut or whatever you want to call it that they get two spices from one. And the seed inside it is what is your nutmeg. And the red web uh, looking covering that's over the top is where they get the spice mace. Thought that was interesting. Two spices from one, uh, one thing. So, to make the pumpkin crunch cake, first of all, you take your 9 by 13 pan and I spray it with Baker's Joy or you can grease and flour it. I've got it sitting aside. I'm going to bring y'all close and let you watch me mix this. I don't even have to use the mixer. And uh, then we'll First get it of all, it calls for four large eggs. So, I'm just going to whisk those. I just love these big old eight cup measuring cups because I can just pour it right out the spout when I get through mixing. It calls for one teaspoon of salt and it calls for two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice from my own factory. Pumpkin pie spice was introduced in the early 1950s as a spice mixture. And the spice companies trying to market their goods, it was the precursor to a lot of your other mixed spices. You know, used to dressing was just sage, and then all of a sudden we had poultry seasoning. Well, that's what happened. They realized that if they would combine some and market them and tell people how to use them, that they would sell. So, first of all was pumpkin pie, and then according to documented history, the others followed suit after that. So, I've got that in there, and then it calls for one large can of canned milk. And it calls for two, uh, one and a half cups of sugar. And I'm just going to give that a mix. You just mix this up. You pour it in your pan. And then we're going to open up a, a box mix of yellow cake mix. Your choice of brand. We're going to sprinkle it over the top. Then we're going to slice some butter on top of that and um, put it in the oven and bake it. And it makes it, okay, I've got one large can of pumpkin. This is so easy. If you're gonna go to a 
together and that it don't have to be, you don't want it worried about it being real fancy. Just get you one of those little throwaway 9 by 13 pans and mix this up and put that little plastic lid on it. And I'm going to tell you what, it tastes so yummy, nobody's going to worry about what it's in. As long as it's clean. You just want to blend that really well until you get that all mixed up. Okay, I've got it all mixed up, and all I'm going to do is pour this mixture into the pan. And on the recipe card, this will be what's listed as number one. I've got it one, two, and three. You mix up number one, you pour it into the pan. Then you're going to open up your cake mix and pour it over that as evenly as you can. Just sprinkle it on. Once you get that on, you're going to take one and a half sticks of butter and you're just going to cut it in little pieces, put it around on the top. I like to make sure I get a little bit in the corners. I don't want dry cake mix in the corners. And I could have sliced this ahead of time, but I figured y'all need to hang in here with me while I did it. Okay. Now, the last thing you do is you put a cup of nuts on the top. Now you can toast your pecans, walnuts, whatever your choice is. I'm just using plain chopped pecans, one cup. And when that butter melts, the pecans kind of get uh, toasted a little bit on the top, and it's just delicious. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is put this into the oven 350 degrees for about 50 minutes. And I'll be back in a minute with a delicious fall dessert. Okay, y'all, here's the cake. All done, still warm. I'm fixing to cut a piece and plate it up and taste of it for y'all. Show you what it looks like. Here it is, I'll plate it up. Isn't it pretty? And see, it has a layer of pumpkin. Uh, it looks like, kind of like a custard on the bottom, and then the cake mix on the top cooks, and the pecans toast. So now y'all know what pumpkin crunch cake looks like, and it's delicious. I hope y'all try the recipe. In fact, what I want to suggest to you is, Get you a little spiral notebook or whatever, a journal, and start you uh, a little cookbook of the holiday season. And to me, that starts in September because it's supposed to be fall whether the weather knows it or not. But especially for Thanksgiving and, and the holidays from Thanksgiving through Christmas, start compiling you some recipes from my YouTube channel and others that you watch and you know special new recipes that'll add a new zine to your table or just a different thing for supper maybe one night a week try something brand new but you know with a fall twist to it one of the good squash soups or a good hearty soup or you know there's a whole lot of new stuff that i haven't tried that i'm trying to incorporate into my uh meal rotation so that's a good thing to do, but the thing to do when you see one you like is go ahead and copy it because you won't remember where it was. Try that and try getting some new stuff on your supper table. And the scents of the fall are so, they just draw you. It's something about those good spicy scents and, and good hearty soups and all that cooking. 
makes you want to go sit at the dinner table and wait till they get supper on there where you can eat it. Y'all get you some recipes together and gather your family around and make some good memories these holidays that are coming up and the weeks that, that are ahead of us. It don't have to be the exact holiday. Just make some sweet memories. Don't forget to give you good Lord some thanks. Jesus has been mighty good to all of us and I appreciate it. Give him some thanks. Gather that family close. Make some time one-on-one -on -one with each other. And uh, y'all come back here tomorrow and we'll learn a new recipe that you might want to put in that little notebook you was going to buy. Good Lord bless and keep you.